Hey, work from homers, Adam Schrader here. We love bringing you this podcast and thousands of you have proven that it's been helpful for you. But since time and online storage space aren't free, Narration and I wanted to come to you personally to ask for your financial support through Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash work from home show and help support the show. And we appreciate your support at any amount you choose. That's patreon.com slash work from home show. Thanks for your support. Let's get to the show. Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Work From Home Show. Shout out to all our homies, homeboys, homegirls, home trans, all the Work From Homers out there. I'm Naresh Vissa with Adam Schrader. Today we have Jaya Jaya Myra with us. She is an author and speaker on natural health, wellness, spirituality, and mind, body, well-being. Her work emphasizes integrative mind-body approaches to wellness, stress reduction, and overall life balance, which helps our work from homers hopefully stay well mentally, emotionally, physically, and most importantly, spiritually. She's the author of the new book, The Soul of Purpose, a step-by-step approach to create a purpose-driven, healthy life. Jaya Jaya Myra, welcome to the Work From Home show. Thanks so much for having me here today. Yeah, well, let's start with your journey, because I was reading your bio, I was reading your history, and you apparently became physically incapacitated. And I guess that's how you got into what you do today. Tell us about that story and how you came to be. Yeah, absolutely. My former career was as a research scientist, uh, specifically in the field of immunology. And at a certain point in my career, I did become absolutely debilitated and the doctors diagnosed it as fibromyalgia because essentially they couldn't find anything else wrong. So they said, well, Therefore, you, you know, you must have fibromyalgia because you have all of these corresponding symptoms and no other disease is present. So the icing on the cake to everything for me was that neither science nor Western medicine were really able to help me. In fact, everything that my doctor tried to do made me feel worse or gave me headaches or made me end up in more pain. So I just walked away from the approach completely left my career as a scientist, walked out right before I had finished my PhD, and started to do things more naturally and holistically. I I wanted to really be fully in alignment with everything I was doing in my life, and I didn't feel it was worth pursuing uh, a career as a scientist when I was finding natural approaches that worked, but you can't really use a scientific method to validate natural approaches since you can't prove that the soul exists, but it is integral to all health and wellness. Now, you just, uh, that was a great answer, and I've got so many questions, but let's first start with what did the di- what did the doctors do? You said they, you said everything that they did was wrong. So what did they exactly do? Did they put you on medications? Did they do perform any surgeries? Now, they tried medications. They tried pain-relieving patches. All of these things actually just made me feel worse. And like the, the typical drug that they would put you on for fibromyalgia is Lyrica, and I just outright refuse that. And I, I'm, I'm very glad for that now, knowing what I know about it and what they've shown about it, like how it affects like brain chemistry and what goes on with memory. I'm glad I never opted for that approach. Uh, but I was just so highly sensitive to chemicals, to anything at the time that I needed to just like get rid of all of that out of my routine, out of my diet and just go a lot more natural and holistic. So how did you go about figuring out kind of the the best way, the right way to, to solve what you were dealing with. Because right now, you know, you go online and Google something, whatever you have, WebMD will tell you you have cancer. Um, Everything else will tell you, you know, this way you can just rub dirt on it. Kind of how do you find the right or, you know, the safe, right things you can do? Well, for me, it started with a platform of mindfulness and meditation, which is going to help with any number of different things. And what I learned during my process 
was not really that there's a right way of going about it, but that we're all individual and unique. So that if you find strategies that are really in alignment with your own constitutional type, uh, I use a five element approach, which is referenced in both Chinese medicine and in Ayurveda, that you can find things that you align with mind, body, and soul. And so the more that you're strengthening each of these components of yourself, it's going to improve everything else. And then I saw that I started gradually getting better uh, mentally, emotionally, and then after a couple of years, even physically, like to the point to where I don't have a trace of fibromyalgia anymore. Oh, wow. So you naturally cured this. Did you share this with the scientific and medical community? And if so, what was her reaction? Oh, they don't care or don't believe it because <laughs> it can't be validated through scientific means. <laughs> wow. So they just so love you it. told you, did, how about that doctor who gave put you or tried to put you on this Medicaid? Did you go well, back to them? My doctor knew, like they knew at the time, this was like in the early to mid two thousands, they weren't really good treatment options for fibromyalgia at the time. And she said your best course would probably be natural, but she had to do her due diligence as a doctor to send me to uh, a specialist who wanted to put me on on the drugs. When I just refused to stop when I refused to take those drugs or said that they weren't working, they were putting me in more pain. Essentially, I just had to stop seeing the doctor because there was nothing that he could do. He's like, well, if you're not going to take my treatment, don't come back anymore. So I didn't go back. <laughs> nice. So what are some of, what are some simple things people can do? I mean, you said mindfulness and meditation. But what are some other things that people can do? Honestly, just like learning how to quiet the mind is so important to let the nervous system start to balance itself. A lot of people have a pretty strong imbalance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system gets out of whack and needs to be brought back into balance because we're far too stressed. We have a lot of adrenaline, uh, just stress responses to everything that the body doesn't know how to go back to its own self-healing mechanisms. So that's what meditation was able to do for me, was to allow the body to essentially hit that reset button so that it could go about healing itself. What, what do you consider, like how do you meditate? Because there's various ways of meditating. What is your preferred method? My preferred method is to start out with a mantra and or visualization and then end in more of a silent meditation. But that really aligns with my constitution type because mantra and visualization, mantra relates to space element and visualization relates to fire. And those are two elements of mine that are particularly strong in my constitution. So I gravitate towards sight and visualization. I gravitate towards sound. So it's really easy for me to utilize those two things as a way to focus my mind while I'm meditating. Now, say like someone who has a lot of air element in their system, they may love focusing on the breath. I don't have a lot of air element in my constitution, so I literally hate trying to do meditations where people are telling me to focus on my breath. Those are always ones I've never uh, been able to be successful with, but give me a visualization give me a mantra and it's super relaxing and I'm able to focus on that. I'm sure you've stayed up to date on the uh, 2020, 2021, the virus, the pandemic, yeah. and applying your uh, alternative holistic approach to healthy living. Um, mm -hmm. We've had previous doctors on our show, previous health and wellness experts on our show, and these aren't your standard oh, just get the vaccine and you're going to be good. Yeah. Uh, we've had folks come in and say, and it, it actually changed, I, I, I talked about this on our wrap-up New Year's episode, mm -hmm. that it actually changed the way that I look at my own life and my own health and that I'm responsible for my health. So I've been taking vitamins A through D, zinc, probiotic, just a bunch of over-the-counter supplements. I've been exercising a lot more, running, focusing more on cardio, like you said, a little bit of meditation, breathing exercises. Diet um, huge, especially to help prevent uh, coronavirus, COVID. I think diet is the simplest thing that we can all do because we all eat food every day, right? Well, most of us, I hope we're eating at least once a day. There's so many antiviral foods that you can consume that will help to boost your immune system and to help keep you from getting sick, even if you're exposed. Yeah, yeah. Well, diet, I myself, I'm vegetarian. I try to be vegan, but it's strictly fully vegetarian. And these are all things, what I said, I wasn't doing most of this two years ago. 
it's it, it took something to hit and then actually take you hear all the time people say oh yeah take your vitamins but do people actually do it or go exercise do people actually do it uh no not not really so uh, in your case on top of diet do you have any other recommendations so that when the next pandemic hits or the next flu season hits what should we be doing to keep ourselves safe while working from home yeah, well, when, when I reference diet, it would be very specifically to add things that are known scientifically proven to be able to ward off viruses. Like onions, for example, are great. They're even known to reduce respiratory infections or to help prevent them, pr prevent things like the common cold or the flu. So we would think that they would also be effective in fighting against COVID or coronavirus. So cinnamon is another potent antiviral food. Garlic is a potent antiviral. Even black and green tea have very strong antiviral properties. So as long as you're consuming one or two of these sorts of foods every single day, you are going to be able to help boost your immune system and also eliminate the presence of that virus naturally. Uh, I haven't gotten sick at all since COVID hit. Um, actually, I haven't gotten sick in years. Actually, since I changed my lifestyle, healed naturally from fibromyalgia, it's extremely yeah. rare that I'll actually even get sick at all anymore. How about oregano? We had an oregano expert come on our show, talk all about it. Do you, are you aware yeah. of the benefits of oregano? Absolutely. Uh, oregano is a very potent antimicrobial as well. You mentioned the the five elements and how you hate air. How do people... <laughs> don't repeat it. I, I know <laughs> the, air, the breathing. Yeah, you don't hate air, obviously. You, en you enjoy it daily. I love it. <laughs> Breathe it every day. But how do, how do you how do you find out what elements fit with you? Is it like a BuzzFeed quiz you take? Or you know how do you, how do you go about finding that? I have some pretty in-depth quizzes in my first book, Vibrational Healing. I have a less in-depth one, but one that will do great in my book that just came out, The Soul of Purpose. But you can do this with a basic dosha quiz that tells you your Ayurvedic dosha. So the, the three doshas in Ayurveda do break down to those five elemental types, like when you go into a little bit more depth. I use the five elements as opposed uh, to the doshas because... If you say like that you're uh, Cappadocia, for example, that could be water or earth element. And those are drastically different in the physical body and also as they relate to your psychological temperament. So I prefer to use the five element approach because it lets you know uh, more about your whole constitution, your body and the way that you think and your disposition is that you really can't hone in on when you're just looking at those three doshas. At what point as a patient let's say I go completely natural, holistic. At, at what point do I say, or do I get something that's bad enough to where it's like, okay, it's time to go visit the, the local hospital and become a part of the, the healthcare system? Yeah, I, I'm definitely not anti-Western medicine. I just know that it has its limitations, particularly when it comes to preventative or chronic care. If you need surgery, you need to get patched up, you're in an accident, I think that is the thing that Western medicine is the best at. But when it comes to dealing with chronic diseases, things uh, that probably have an emotional, a mental health component along with them, or preventative care, just because doctors can't make you live a healthy lifestyle, right? They, they can tell you to eat a better diet and to exercise, but since they can't make you do that, these are things that you have to really work on on your own to where going to a doctor is not going to be as effective. You wrote an article um, back at the start of the pandemic or towards the beginning of the pandemic, the five powerful ways to shift your mindset during COVID and beyond. Can you talk a little bit about those ways? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's many uh, ways in addition probably to what I wrote in the article. Uh, I really am such a huge advocate for for diet because diet is huge for facilitating a better mood in people. So a lot of people don't understand the connection between what you eat, uh, the gut brain axis and how this is affecting your mental health. And there's different ways that we can look at that. We can look at it through production of dopamine and serotonin, norepinephrine in the body. These are essentially hormones that get created that help to regulate mood. Well, over 90% of serotonin, even though we think about it for brain chemistry, is actually made in the gut, and it's based on what we eat. Dopamine is very similar. Like, we can get a dopamine hit from exercise. We can also get it from foods like bananas, 
dark chocolates. Uh, those are two probably of the best ones to make dopamine. If you just eat the right foods, it's going to facilitate a better mood for you because you're literally creating those hormones and stimulating those biochemical pathways to do this for you naturally. We also have the pre and probiotic connection to mental health. So science now can validate that your microbiome that lives in your gut has a very strong connection to whether you're depressed or stressed or prone to anxiety. So the more that your microbiome is healthy, you are going to be uh, likely in a better mood. If your microbiome has a tendency to get killed off or depleted or you're not nourishing it with prebiotics, you're going to be more prone to stress, anxiety, depression, and mental health issues in general. So again, I think so much comes back to diet that we, we don't realize. It's probably why nutritional psychology is such an emerging field that people are interested in because we need to, we need to more deeply understand how important the connection is between what we're eating and our mental and emotional well-being. I touched on vitamin supplementation earlier. Do you think that's a good thing to just go to the store, take over-the-counter vitamins? Is, is that natural enough for you? Or would you say continue to eat your onions and uh, other items that you just listed off? It's never going to get any better than through the foods that you eat. Uh, I've heard a lot of doctors tell me that if you're taking vitamins as supplements, that the body doesn't assimilate them in quite the same way as if they're getting them through a source of food. Now, I still think it's better to take the vitamin than to not take the vitamin because at least you're going to be getting something. But if you can add in these foods every day or a lot of it's actually going to come through the spices that you use in cooking, that it, it's always excellent to get it directly from the source because it will assimilate more easily. Same with, with uh, prebiotics, probiotics. Take a probiotic supplement if you need it, but if you eat fermented foods, things like sauerkraut or cultured yogurt, uh, or like South Indian food, like dosa or idli, like these things are going to have those probiotics naturally. That's going to be better than taking them in a pill form. That's great. I'm South Indian, so I, I think I'm a healthy person. I, I absolutely, you know, <laughs> I, I have to have my dosa and idli, or I am not a happy person. <laughs> Can you talk about your well method with the four cornerstones of a purpose-filled, healthy life? Oh, absolutely. Um, I created the well method as a platform for people to essentially shape their mindset in a positive way. It's like an ethos that you can use to live by, regardless of what your belief system or religious or spiritual beliefs are, you can use this as a platform to elevate your mental wellness because you shape it to what you need for you. So the W stands for work-life harmony. And I think that this is super important because we tend to overuse the word balance in our culture. And I don't think that we ever actually have balance, especially as super successful people. You always tend to be type A, you're focused on work. You're always probably like working too much, right? So how do we actually facilitate health and well-being when you're really driven? Uh, the more that you're doing things that are in alignment with your constitution type, like your five element constitution, you're doing things that are in alignment with your purpose. And whenever you're doing those things, you naturally have a lot more energy than when you're trying to do things that are not in alignment with your type. So I use the word harmony to connote this connection between living your purpose, utilizing your God-given talents and strengths and gifts because those things help you to cultivate harmony and synergy that give you more energy and more of that uh, inner prosperity and support that you need to stay successful with everything that you're doing. So this, this notion of cultivate harmony, know what's important for you, know what those boundaries and limitations are. Like maybe you're a parent with kids and you want to be at home with them after school. Maybe that's something that you need to feel successful, like having that work-life harmony. Just know what these things are for you so that you can advocate for yourself and look up, like for the right sorts of job or career that's going to enable you to get what you need to succeed. So that's, uh, that's the W. Uh, e, I think, is one of my favorite ones. It stands for expect excellence in yourself or enable excellence in other people. We tend to underestimate what we're capable of. And expecting excellence is a reminder that you are capable of anything that you put your mind and your heart to. Uh, you just have to set really concrete goals for yourself. You have to understand what you want to accomplish 
and remember that you can literally do so much more than you think. And just by helping to encourage other people, you're helping to enable them to be at their best too. And the two L's stand for live your purpose and love, not fear. So purpose, again, relates to this notion that we all have talents and strengths and gifts that are innate to our constitution. And your purpose is actually at the root of what creates your entire physical body constitution, your, your five elemental type. So if you're living in alignment with your purpose, essentially everything in mind, body, spirit will be in alignment to facilitate a healthy lifestyle. Can you expand on that a little bit more? How do we know what our purpose is? I'm sure many people have no clue. Yeah, I, so this is something that I, I talk about in my book, The Soul of Purpose. I think there's two primary things that people can look at to either find their purpose or to redefine it. If uh, maybe you're a little bit later in life, you feel like you've accomplished your first set of goals. So the first part is to identify those talents and gifts that are innate to you and your five element constitution because this is gonna show you the, the things that you're good at. When you start to combine these things together, like, like if I look at me, I have a lot of earth, I have a lot of fire, I have a lot of space. You can combine different attributes in these together. So earth element gives strong abilities in writing, in organization, in management. Fire has to do a lot like with visualization and attention to detail and willpower and focus. Uh, space element relates to space, design, decor, uh, music, things of that nature. So when I combine all of these things together, it really paints a picture of the things that I enjoy doing. Like I have a strong predilection towards music, uh, listening to it and towards singing. Of course, I, I'm a writer, as you know, I also run a PR and communications company. So most everything I do is around some form of communication, whether it's written or verbal. Uh, and that attention to detail and organization, like really, it is really important as a part of running a company or being a professional speaker. So when you start to identify your talents and your strengths, that's like half of the picture. And then the other half is looking at your life experience, because I truly believe that the things that happen to us, both the good things and the bad things, they shape our desire and the things that we find meaning in. So particularly when you have painful experiences, this is going to move you in a direction to want to enable other people not to have those same experiences. So when you can combine your talents with the things that help to bring meaning into your life, like look at, look at what has happened in your life, you can usually put those two things together, like two sides of a coin, and really hone in on something that's gonna cultivate meaning for you. Awesome, you, you've been mentioning diet several times, so I felt like I need to ask, what is one food if you could add in the most Americans diet that you would add in? I would add in a, a, a basic uh, curry blend because there's already so much stuff that's in curry. Uh, it has a base of turmeric. Turmeric is a very powerful anti-inflammatory food. They usually have ginger in them as well. Ginger is a powerful anti-inflammatory. Just about every spice that we have, uh, and particularly in curry, has some sort of a health and medicinal benefit to it. If we were just going to go with like one single thing that's like not a blend, I would probably still say turmeric just because of its very potent um, anti-inflammatory properties. So inflammation is also connected with depression. The more inflammation that's in the body, the more prone an individual is to depression. Science used to think that uh, depression was due to a chemical imbalance. Now we know it is actually more due to inflammation in the body. So anything that you can do to reduce that, you're going to improve your mood naturally. I think as a second, though, I would say uh, Ceylon cinnamon. Cinnamon has so many potent health and wellness benefits. It can help reduce blood sugar in the body. We tend to, especially in the West, consume far too much sugar. This is going like, to help to regulate that so you're not actually assimilating as much sugar. It's also a potent antimicrobial and antiviral food. So those would be two of the go-to that I would add into every person's diet. As far as depression goes, or speaking of depression, what are your thoughts on the psychiatry industry, traditional medicine, when it comes to the treatment of mental health? Uh, to me, it, it just seems like a lot of prescription of, of medication, not enough of what you do, the natural stuff. Mm -hmm. What are your general thoughts? I think it's horrible. I think that mental health is on a spectrum, and when you get into psychiatry, there's a lot of labels about 
what's wrong with you. And it's not this understanding that we're constantly on the spectrum and we're either moving towards a place of better mental well-being or worse mental well-being and health. And eventually, if you stay on that spectrum, you would end up labeled with a diagnosis if you don't do things like to improve your your mood or your well-being naturally. Uh, I don't like the stigma that's associated with mental health issues because literally every single person on the planet has some sort of thing that happens to them at some point in their life that they could be labeled with a mental health issue like uh, depression or anxiety or something much worse. And medication is really not the way to treat this. Again, we know that a lot of this is due to inflammation in the body. It's not due to a chemical imbalance. So why are we going to drugs first as a way of treatment and not going towards things like meditation or mindfulness or dietary changes or counseling or talk therapy that's going to help you to work through your issues? Uh, I think that holistic psychiatry is definitely going to be the wave of the future. And I I really hope that people start relying far less on traditional, um, traditional things like drugs when it comes to mental health issues, because I don't believe that that's the way to treat it in most of the cases. Of course, some people who have serious mental health problems, that's another story. Uh, but we should start looking at the natural ways first. Jaya Jaya Myra, author of the new book, The Soul of Purpose, a step-by-step approach to create a purpose-driven, healthy life. A lot of great tips, resources, healthy strategies that she shared on the Work From Home show today. The website is jayajayamyra.com. That's J-A-Y-A-J-A-Y-A-M-Y-R-A.com. Myra, any final thoughts that you want to share with our listeners or anything else you want to plug? Um, th- that's all. I think really if there's any small thing that you can do to I- improve your health and wellness, it's going to be to do something each and every day that you really enjoy doing. Just forming this consistent habit and time for self ca- self-care, that's going to move mountains for everything else you do. So take 15 minutes a day just to do something that makes you happy. I've got one last question for you. Our listeners are mostly business people, business owners, employees at companies, corporations, and they're predominantly working from home. That's why they listen to the work from home show. What advice do you have for this specific target market to improve creativity, innovation, be more productive? Honestly, it's learning that that right balance between how much you're working and how much time you're spending on things that make you happy. Uh, the more that we spend our time just focusing on work, and when you work from home, you tend to overwork, right? Uh, we, we now know due to surveys and stuff that people work longer hours when they work from home than when they work in the office. You have to find a way to cut that off and to do things that you're passionate about. Because if you're not doing your hobbies and you're not doing things you're truly passionate about, you're going to bring much less energy and creativity and focus into your job. So make sure to take time to do those things that you really are enjoying each and every day, because it's going to make you more productive and effective the time that you're focusing to your work. Really, really good interview. Jaya Jaya Myra, thanks so much for joining us on the Work From Home Show. And to all our listeners, you can check this episode out and its episode page at workfromhomeshow.com, as well as all of our previous 150 plus episodes. Again, that's workfromhomeshow.com. Reach out to us, contact us through Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. We're everywhere. Our email address is hello at workfromhomeshow.com. That's the most popular way people get in touch with us. Hello at workfromhomeshow.com. And until next week, keep on working from home. <music>